So, hey guys, so today I'm going to be answering a great question that I got. Well, I guess it's not so great, but um, somebody asked me, do I believe in potential or change or like do I allow people to come back after they've changed or shown potential to change? And I'll tell you like this, I don't ever feel a need to really return to people or allow them to return to me because I feel like I've grown past them. I'm always going up. Like I said in my videos before, I'm like a train going 200 miles per hour all the time. I don't really have time to look back, you know? But here's the thing. I truly believe that my life is of perfect design and anything that's going to happen for me is already in front of me. I just have to make my way there. And sometimes you truly are acting as a crutch for people who don't want to be their best. You know, when you are sticking around or when you're tolerating someone who um, enabling someone to not really be on their best behavior around you or not give their best, then you're obviously acting as a crutch for them. Like you're just this thing that's just something for them to lean on while they're being mediocre, lazy, or broke, or um, just not go doing well in life. And that applies to friends too. Sometimes you have to separate yourself, not only for yourself, but it's the best for them too. And that's kind of how I see it when I do separate myself from people is like, I think it's the best for me and that other person so that they can get on their grinds too because maybe I was the crutch. Maybe I was the distraction from their potential too. So now I'm going to separate myself to give them that opportunity to reach their full potential. Um, also, like I was watching a video and um, if I can find a link, then I will link it below. Um, but this guy, he actually became a millionaire after his wife left him. Um, she left him around 28. He said he was 28 and, um, the love of his life left him. And he even said himself, he said, I wouldn't have dated my 28 year old self either. I was broke. I had no ambition. I wasn't really doing much. And she found a guy that could take her to nice places um that could do things and was living well so he took that as an opportunity when that crutch was released from him he took that as an opportunity and changed his life literally went through this whole process of starting from the bottom and changed his life because he realized when he didn't have that crutch that oh my god you know, I, what am I doing? Who am I? How am I living like this? And he literally turned around and did something for himself. And now he's very successful. He's a millionaire and uh, actually ended up remarrying later. But this is exactly how I feel too for even friends and family and stuff. Now, friends and family, because I have great, great friendships and I've had great, great friendships in my life. Um, sometimes you do need to separate yourself from friends to grow because you guys need your own growing processes and everything. Um, it shouldn't be anything too harsh or dramatic like a fight or like they disrespected you or slept with your friend or something. But sometimes you guys can be enabling each other to just be lazy or not really, uh, dedicating yourself to what you could be doing. So sometimes you do need to separate yourself or just spend less time together just so you can you can both get yourselves off track. That don't mean ghost your friends, but sometimes you really or your family, but sometimes you do need to, you know, make sure that you got yourself good because you you can act as a cancer. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm a cancer. Um, but you can act as a cancer for the people around you and their own growing processes. That's why it's like, you know, it's really good to not be an enabler. And that's basically what all of my work is about from Twitter to Instagram to YouTube. I'm not an enabler at all. And I don't want to attract those followers who want that because there's tons. I'm talking about millions of people online who want enablers, those are the types of people they are attracted to, those are the only types of messages that they are trying to hear 
from whether you are a life coach, career coach, dating coach, relationship therapist, tarot reader, um, astrologer, um, what are some other stuff? They, um, even, you know, I've even seen it with both female and male dating coaches. It's just like trying to enable people or weaken them and not really tell them the truth so that they can, they never really make any progress. They just come back for more enabling. So if that's, you know, you can make a career out of that if you want to, because I'm telling you, it's a million people, you know, who, who are looking for that. But, um, yeah, you just don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you are your best and people around you are on their best so that you are not just holding on to things just because, oh, this could be a great relationship just if they did this, you know, if they really activated their potential, if they actually went out and did this. No, allow them to do those ifs, ands, and buts on their own, you know, and you move on about your life. And, you know, what's crazy for me is the cicada that I'm always talking about that her, him and that weirdo tried to ruin my life on the internet or whatever. Um, one thing about him is that he did teach me to dream and that my thoughts were very basic, very average, very much so living in an apartment for the rest of my life or like getting a little house somewhere one day, maybe in the hood and um, not really doing too much, just kind of getting by. And when I met him, what made me fall for him is the fact that he was a hard worker. He was definitely trying to get himself up there. Like, he was already doing well for himself, but trying to get himself past that. And I already thought he was doing great. So that was really what made me, like, really attracted to him. And just seeing him work and everything, it really was inspiring to me. And... um the fact that he had all these dreams about living in these condos and mansions and um, like working towards that, saving towards that, working hard every day, that was something I really didn't come in contact with often because I realized everybody around me was just settled and being mediocre, being average, living an average life and just getting by, you know, just getting, just getting by and then dying. And it really opened my eyes to how much I did not want for my own self, you know? And it was so crazy to me because I, re I, thought, I thought I did have big dreams, you know? I thought I did have at least, you know, goals. I was always a goal-oriented person, but I realized all my goals were just, like, to get by, to do well, not to really materialize all the things that could come of it. And I realized there were so many things that I literally blocked my mind of having access to in my life and how crazy that was. There were just like even a, a nice house, you know, in the suburbs. I had blocked my mind off of even thinking that that was possible. You know, things that people already have, nice cars or a great thriving career or, you know, it just, it was just so many things. Like even, and I've always been really great at everything that I did, but I never really thought about how much better I could be doing, you know, until I met him. And I was like, wow, this is so, so crazy. And um, actually what made me start, actually start the business because of being a dating coach because I had never, I really wasn't going to start it at first. I just wanted to, I was just supposed to be helping out a few people, right? But what really made me go ahead and commit myself to it was actually him making me upset. Because I thought, I believed that he was like, because I saw this, quote unquote, this vision or this potential that we had together. Because I was so attracted to the way that he uh, he was a dreamer and everything and a hard worker. Um, I had attached myself to that. And I was like, whoa, wait. I'm my own person. I have my own life. I can accomplish all that by myself. You know, if I already have the vision, then that means if I can see it, then I can do it. 
you know? And that was literally the day. Uh, uh, actually, he had made me upset because he didn't show up to something that I had planned for us. And that was the day that I literally launched my sessions on Twitter, actually. And um, from there, it really just took off. But I used all of that anger, all of that potential that I thought he had to bring to my life and brought it to my own life. And, like, look at me now. Now I'm, like, international and growing. So, and this is only the beginning for me because I'm now my goals are bigger. My dreams are bigger. And the potential that I focus on is my own potential. The potential that other people have, they need to show it to me now. Now it's like, you need to prove to me that you're more than just a dreamer, more than just a talker. Because there are a lot of people who die and they always, and they have like amazing ideas and they never commit themselves to it. So what is making you different? And that's something I ask myself too. There's so many people that die that had, that have great um, um, imaginations and business ideas and goals that literally just talked about them and dreamt about them, but they never committed themselves to it because they just thought it wasn't possible or they just didn't want to. And nothing makes me different from those people who die with those amazing dreams and ideas that we'll never have access to at all. Nothing makes me different from them but the fact that I'm going to try my best to commit myself to my own potential, to my own goals, to my own dreams. That's why I don't focus on other people's potential, other people's changes, other people's whatever. Because I have my own potential to focus on. I have my own potential to unlock. And that's exactly why I don't really care about people's changes or their potential because it's like, if it's there, then they'll work on it on their own. They won't need me to be there to be a crutch or to really walk beside them to aid them with that. It'll happen for them either way because I didn't need him to walk beside me to make this happen. So, you know, why should somebody else who actually has the goals, the visions, the potential need me to walk beside them while they make whatever they need to make happen? No. That's just not something I do. So, yeah, you can comment, share, and subscribe. Um, you also can hit me up on Instagram, an actual Black Mermaid, or Twitter at Imani underscore Yvonne, too. And I will talk to you guys later. I love you guys.